Today I'm going to show you how to create a Canvas course from scratch. And I think that in general it's a good idea to create them from scratch rather than importing them from Angel because it really teaches you how to use Canvas. You have two options. You can choose start a new course or if you have one that's been created for you and it's one that you're using for the first time and we'll just go into this one that I'm teaching in the second eight weeks that I haven't added content to yet. Oh wait, I did import ones into that. Let's do that again. Let's see. Um, well, we'll just create a new course, but you can go into one of your existing ones. I've got, unfortunately, I've got most of mine set up, so I'm just going to close that, click on courses and groups, that takes me to where I can create a new course. And I'm going to call this Delete Me so that I remember to delete it. And I'm going to hit Create Course. Now I will typically create a course if I'm working on something for a future semester and then I'll copy it in when I have it all created. And I find that very useful. The first thing that I do when I'm creating a new course is I change the home page layout. I like to use the course modules sections. And I'm going to close this next steps window and I'm going to update layout. I find it very useful to do that because to do things in modules because I'm a linear thinker and I usually will set up my modules starting with getting set up and then I will create ones for each week week one, getting started, week two, under water basket weaving. So I'll add my modules and then I can add items to my modules. For my for, with the getting set up module I almost always, always start with a content page, which is basically a web page. And I'm going to call it Contacting Your Instructor. And to save time, I do things in Word that I'm going to repeat multiple places. And I want you to look at my formatting here in Word. I have things centered and I've blocked out pieces of my schedule here. Um, if I'm going to print, put this online, I will save as Adobe PDF. And I'm going to leave that on my desktop so it's easy to find. So I'll usually put this as a file and as an import. So I can select everything and it actually works better coming from Word. Now one of the tricks in working with Word, actually I don't really like doing this, you can save things as a web page. It works better from Dreamweaver though because you can use pure HTML tags. So I can hit Control A and select all. Control A, Control C, I'm copying and then I can go into Canvas and in this contacting your instructor, it's the same contact information for all of my courses, so I don't want to recreate it multiple times. So I take it from Word, and I copy and paste. So I'm selecting Edit This Page. <coughs> and then this is just like a word processor, so I could create content directly here, or I can paste it in. Now, notice I had areas blacked out. That didn't come through and so sometimes things don't. So I could go through some alternate formatting. What I found in this area is just to put unavailable for my, this which is blocked out because I don't work Mondays this semester. This semester I'm working Tuesday through Saturday because I'm teaching every Saturday. So I took Mondays off so I still have something of a weekend. And then I will put that for any place that I am unavailable for student appointments. And for me, I'm taking a few classes. I'm taking classes in how to create iPhone apps, which is Friday morning, so I'll make sure that I'm listed as unavailable then. And I'm also taking karate 
I don't tell my students what I'm doing. I just mark myself as unavailable for appointments because I don't want them to think that I'm available during those times. So I'm going to do some editing on that and then I'll copy and paste that into my other classes. So I can get rid of this. I just am putting unavailable. Okay, so I'm going to save my changes. I'll come back and finish that later at some point or not since I'm going to delete this class. Then there's multiple sorts of things I can add to each section. Usually my second step would be to go into the files section. And in the files I will add some folders. I'll add an images folder Try this again. Add folder, add files. Alright, so I've got files set up. I have files I'm going to want to use for this class. I've got them on my desktop. And so I'm going to pretend I'm working with my project management class. I'm going to just select a few of my project te management templates. Or if you have a zip file, you can open the zip file. And it'll take it a minute because there's a lot of files in here. Then I have the option here to lock the file, rename the file, or delete the file. Now this is a file I'm going to want all of my students to download because it has the files that they're going to be using. And I can also choose to download the files in this folder as zip files. So you've got some options here. Um, I can add another folder which I will name course files. So if I didn't want them as zipped files, I can add files. And here I can go to my desktop. And I'm going to choose Contacting Your Instructor, upload that. I will typically add my syllabus as a file as well. And so I'll just pick, I've got a PDF of my project management syllabus, which is right there. So I will go through and before I get started I will add files, add folders, and I like to have these set up before I start. Let me go back into the top level here, add folder. I'll usually add images if I'm going to use images. And so I'll have some basic folders set up for my course files. And I might have a zip file if I want the students to download something. And then I could always rearrange things if I want to. I think I'd have to re-upload it. Wait a minute. I can No, it's not going to let me slide that around. Okay, so the, so I'll start by uploading my files first. I'm going to go back to my home area. And then the next thing that I like to do is go into my settings. Depending if I'm teaching a class live or online is what I'm going to choose. Now I will typically edit my course details for the start, and we'll have it start uh, yesterday and end uh, tomorrow, which is okay because it's a delete me, but you usually want to have this open set up to start your, the first day of your course. I usually actually have mine end a couple days after so students can still go in and see their grades. Um, and then I have it set up where users can only participate in the course between these dates. You can set up a grading scheme and you can go in and set that so it's set up here and you can edit your grading scheme 
You can manage your grading schemes. I have one set up here. This is one that I like to use. I'm going to go back into my course and go back into my settings. The next thing that I like to do in the settings is go into navigation. Now I don't use all of these and I pull out anything that is going to confuse my students. I'll use chat if it's an online course but not in a live course. I use attendance in a live course but not an online course. Collaborations, I haven't really started using these yet. Modules I pull out because my home page is my module page. If you aren't doing it that way, leave modules in. I like the students to go through the modules for the quizzes. I don't like the students to see the outcomes. Syllabus I leave in here, but it's a little funky. Um, I'll let the students get to the files, to pages, to people, to grades. I like the students to go into discussions through the modules. Assignments, I'll leave that in, but again, it does funky things, so you've got to be aware of how they're using it. Okay, make sure you save things to apply changes. And these that are visible are available to students. Notice, even though I left announcements, it's grayed out. So I can make an announcement. Are we having fun yet? And once I've done that, then announcements become available. Something important to note, the settings on the top of the page are your personal settings. The settings on the left-hand side of the page are settings for the class that you're currently in. So I'm going to return to the home page, and I'm going to start adding content now. In the getting set up, and that got out of order, I always have the contacting your instructor page and you can also add files. And so I'm going to add a file here and I can use an existing course file which I've already uploaded my syllabus. So I'm going to add that and then I want to actually edit this. This will actually show my syllabus. But here, I can edit what it says. Downloadable syllabus. Make sure you proofread, because I can see here I have an error. It's not under wait, it's under water basket weaving. Make sure you proofread your course before you publish it. Okay, so I've got course modules set up. I've added files, and I've shown you how to create a course page and, a, and add a file. So in my getting started section, I'm going to add some other types of content. I'm going to add quiz and call it quiz one. Don't worry about this right now. I'll come back to that in a second. I'm going to add content and this time I'm going to add a text header. This is used like a folder to logically separate items in your module and we'll call it homework due September 3rd and so we can arrange this we can have multiple ones in each module to separate things and then you can also indent things by different layers if you want them to appear to be sort of subdivided in the module. I'm going to add an assignment, new assignment, assignment one. I'm going to make it worth 15 points and I'm going to have it due August 28th. And
And again, I could indent this if I wanted to. And then I'm going to add content and I'm going to add a discussion. I'm going to call it discussion one, add item. I'm going to indent it. I'm going to add one last thing. I'm going to add an external URL. And the URL is http colon slash slash McHenry dot edu mcc and so I can add a link and so this shows you the different icons quiz assignment discussion and link and while these exist notice only the assignment one puts up a due date if I go into the assignments page you'll see assignment one exists quiz one is also in here but it doesn't have a date. But the discussion is not. Let's go back to the home page and fix a few of those things. So we have these here, but there's no content in them. So when I go into quiz one, I can edit this, and I can add questions, and I will make this an essay question. and I will make it worth 10 points. And I could put comments in here if I wanted to. So I'm going to update questions. I'm going to my course, set, my quiz settings. I'm going to put it in here. I can put a time limit in of 20 minutes. and I can put in a due date for this. And notice that I'm not putting an available from or until. I'm allowing students to do things late, but then I would go in and edit their scores and deduct points because it was late. And I will save it. But that doesn't publish it. I then have to publish it. And then I can go to my home page. And you'll see that since I put an assignment date, the assignment date and the points now show up here. You can also make the discussion an assignment. Put the details in here. And I'm going to allow threaded replies. And I'm going to make it graded. By making it graded, I make it an assignment and make it worth 15 points. And I'm going to assign it a due date. Now you'll notice that it's giving me options for assignment groups. Everything now has a due date and points. And if I go into my syllabus, you'll see it will create things organized by due dates. That's why I put in two separate due dates. So you'll see it automatically organizes things. I can edit my syllabus description and I could add a file here, which I typically do. I'm going to go into my course files and that's my syllabus. and update syllabus. So I could put an actual description here for my syllabus, um, which I might choose to do. Usually I just put in the printed copy so that they have this and then they have the dates. But be aware, they can go directly to this assignment and not see any lectures or pages in front of it. I'm going to edit the assignment here because it's important for you to know how to have make a Dropbox. So we can put in directions here. And to make it where they can hand things in, you have to go into the Show Advanced option and choose a submission type. Online, 
allow text entry, and file uploads. So I'm going to update my assignment. Then we go to my home page. You can see everything in here should have a date and does. Um, the assignment page is an interesting page. One of the things that I like about Canvas is that you can create assignment groups. So I could have assignments, I could have quizzes, I could have discussions. And let's say we want discussion to be 60% of total grade and quizzes to be 20% and assignments to be 20%. We can create a grading scale here. We can drag things around so that they're in the right area. And you can see that they're separated. We can also go and see more information on any one of these items and change due dates and things right here in the assignment area, which I think is really useful. We can update points. We can say this is worth 10 points. We can update. So the assignments page is very powerful and you can add new assignments directly in here. It won't appear, but it won't appear when I've done this. Adding the assignment here does not make it appear in the modules. So that assignment 2 that I created, it may exist, but it really isn't organized in here. So I would want to add it and so I'm going to choose assignment, but notice in assignments oops, nope, that's a, that's a quiz 2 I call it, so I can add the item and I can drop it in this way. Something else to notice, if I delete something here, assignment 1, I'm deleting it. It's deleting it from the module, not from the course. So if students were to go into the assignment page, even though you think you've deleted it, it still exists, which means it also exists in the grade book. Because everything that I've created and assigned points to exists in the grade book. So be very careful when you're adding and deleting assignments to make sure that it, you're putting it where the students can see it. And if you delete something from the modules and you really don't want it to exist, make sure that you delete it from the gradebook as well. So if you delete it from one place, make sure you delete it from both. When you're done with this and have added all this content, and you can go into a whole class on each piece of content, so this is just a really fast crash course to give you enough information to be dangerous. The last thing you're going to do is go home and you'll notice it's unpublished and you'll, you will want to publish your course. So that's a really quick overview on starting from scratch, adding content, organizing your course. You really should go through the Canvas training but this is your Cliff Notes version of how to rapidly get started on creating your course.